everyone, Pally Tom here. Welcome back to Heroes of the Storm. I, uh, I'm moving on Friday, and today my whole family went out of town to visit some relatives. My move got uh, moved up. That soon as came out right. So originally we were all going to go out for dinner like a week from now, but uh, turns out I'm going to have to move a little bit sooner just to make sense for the work schedule. So uh, I said goodbye to everybody today, and it was it fucking sucked. Oh, what a what an emotional day. Real, just awful. Just, just awful. So, I'm going to try to make up for that just by playing some fun builds today. What a start by saying you probably shouldn't do these. I just did a warm-up game with Li Ming. It went great. We won. Uh, I did a lot of damage. Had some really good plays. But I decided that the build was just too normal. It was just too standard. Uh, so, so we're going to make it a little bit more fun, a little bit more all in, and we'll see how it goes. This realm needs me. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves on Infernal Shrines today. I'm, I'm doing, I'm, oh, how do I, how do I say this without them being mad at me? I'm, uh, going for an aggressive build since we have so much support. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. So, Astral Presence at level 1. Uh, we're taking that just so we don't run out of mana. I don't want to run out of, I don't want to run out of mana. Astral Presence makes it so I don't run out of mana. I started this build, or we did a variation of this on run... I think it was one of the Heroes Unites. And Tim was like, you should just play Li Ming and go and pick Qs. Everything is Q. And I was like, that sounds awful. But what he actually meant was, hey, maybe you should get some Q talents as well as the normal talents that Lei Ming's would pick up. Uh, I didn't, I didn't do that. I just went for every Q talent that there was. Um, turns out it was really fun. I, I don't think it was that good, but it was really fun. And I've been messing around with some Q based builds a little bit more just to try to see how viable it is. And I'm gonna start by saying it's not. Don't do it. Uh, you need you need certain talents in order to live through stuff, and we're taking a lot of those talents away. So um, we we have to rely on our team a lot more. As far as what you should be playing in quick match, this is not it. Want to make that very clear. But now that that's out of the way, our Q abilities, uh, magic missiles. I call it seekers a lot because of a talent. So uh, I mean, probably just expect that. Um, it is three different projectiles. They're going to be leaving Li Ming and flying towards our adversaries. The idea is to get all three projectiles to hit the same spot. It's actually really hard. It's pretty, it's pretty fucking difficult. Um, by doing that, you could deal a lot of damage in a very short amount of time. And as I mentioned, the majority of our build is going to be based around the idea of throwing out Q after Q after Q after Q after Q, after Q but then auto attacking in between. Keep in mind, they do have a lot of dive. Murky is going to be running towards me. Uther's going to be running towards me. Zeratul's going to be on top of me all the time. And of course, Tracer just farms Li Ming. Like, let's be honest. It's, it's not a good relationship. It's not a good relationship at all. So we're going to try to deal with that. Um, Mur Murky's just going to push if I don't. I'll ask the team. I'll ask the team what they want. So, Charge Blast. Magic Missile marks an enemy for bonus damage. You don't have to land all three Magic Missiles on top of a target to get that bonus damage. Just one of them needs to hit, and then you can see they get that little marker on them, and uh, we could deal some bonus damage. It's pretty dope. The team didn't answer me, so um, I'm just going to assume that that's a yes. I really should be killing this Pufferfish. I know that. I know that. You know that. As you can see, it's, I have a really hard time landing Seekers up close. I'm more used to doing it at range. Hey, they answered me. To, I actually can't kill that Pufferfish. I'm going to have to use my W on it. I can't just auto attack it down. Uh, our W ability is the Arcane Orb. And that is a, once again, straight line skill shot that deals more damage the further. Fuck me. The further the projectile goes. This sucks. I mean, I'm not gonna die. Don't worry. Not gonna die. I'm just saying. Uh, we might. 
I'm not gonna die, but we might die. Just so we're all clear on that. Murky's kind of forcing me to stay down here. Like, I want to go help with the objective, but I also have to, um... If he's going to be just pushing and getting free XP, I got to counter that. Um, unfortunately, it looks like we lost our Lily and she was um, taken out of the fight. So it looks like we are going to lose this objective. That's okay. Not the end of the world. Not even worried about it, actually. I almost, I almost got that one. I almost clicked on it. Our E ability is teleport. It's going to allow me to move a short distance in one direction. This is more for getting away from damage rather than gap closing because it simply doesn't go a very far distance. You can get some upgrades for it, but uh, generally speaking, we're going to be using it just to do these little micro repositions and, and not for too much more. Oh, murky. Now, we are actually pretty good at dealing siege damage because our seekers have some pretty long range and a very short cooldown. We're looking at a three second cooldown on our arcane or orbs what's it called magic missiles arcane orbs are w ability i just call them seekers i'm sorry i don't mean to um we are going to be going for calamity at level seven now you might be saying but pally time you said this was a, a seeker build why aren't you going seekers well again that's just kind of what i call the ability on habit not on purpose but Calamity takes a lot of the difficulty out. We don't necessarily need to land all three Seekers on a single target. What we could do is just constantly throw out our Qs, and then later on, we're gonna get talents that allow us to, oh my God. Later on, we're gonna get talents that allow us to take advantage of the fact that they're gonna be diving me constantly, as you may be able to see here. Oh, oh, oh God, whoa, goodness. It's okay. Don't worry. That was, that was sketchy. That was sketchy. Um, so, as of right now, we have the ability to never run out of mana, or at least that's the idea with Astral Presence. I did try Power Hungry a couple times, and just having to look for the regen globes in the middle of a team fight, I didn't like it. I didn't like it one bit. So we switched over to Astral Presence. Level four, we're going for Charge Blast, because I just want to throw a Q at someone, have it hit, and then deal extra damage with an auto attack. And then Calamity, for when people dive me, we want to get in there, teleport in on top of them, and try to get those fat resets as soon as possible. Uh, the enemy team is level 10. We're going to need 10 as soon as possible. Uh, so, to 10 ASAP. I mean, it looks like what, that's what they're doing already, but I just want to encourage them. Oh, I got out! I got out, Murky! What you gonna do? That was your big chance! That was your big chance, Murky! You lost it! So you look at this bonus damage. It's already starting to build up, and this isn't even our final form. Uh, we are gonna go for the Wave of Force here at level 10, because I don't ever really want to be standing still. We want to be moving all the time. Wave of Force is a AoE that also has a knockback on top of it, so it, we might mess up a few skill shots here and there, uh, but the general idea is we want to deal burst damage, move, get resets, deal more burst damage. So that's what we're trying to do with that. Oh, he just moved everyone out of all of the damage that I could have dealt. That feels real shit. All right, we messed up that as well. God, they're turning out to be real tanky in here, team. Wasn't quite able to go in and finish off Medivh, although he is really low right now. Looks like we are going to be able to take over this objective, though. Those arcane orbs deal a lot of damage. So as Murky keeps dying in these team fights, he's just going to continue to prime me over and over and over for resets. And that's the reason why we wanted the mana return talent, because we don't want to just spend all of our fucking mana on resets and then not be able to do anything with it. Like, that feels real shitty. All right, so at level 13, what we're going to do is pick up Cannoneer, which is an auto attack talent that you get more damage after you use an ability. As you can see, we're using a lot of abilities. Like I said, we only have a three second cooldown on our Q. And we're already priming targets for additional damage when we Q them. Which means we can start to stack that damage up even more. Which I shouldn't have to tell you, that's just fun. That's just fun. We start, we start scaling a lot here. 
Yeah. Yeah, you just, you just go ahead and take those teleports, Medivh. Let's see how that works out for you. I'll just save all my burst damage for when he goes through there. I mean, after all, we do have Calamity. Now, I do need to make sure I don't press my E ability twice like I did there, because we kind of just teleported twice with that Calamity damage, which was a little unfortunate. Okay, I mean, I'm fine just continuing to fight. I don't I don't see anything wrong with that. God, Medivh is making this difficult, though. Let me fucking tell you. He's mitigating so much damage in here. Oh, I tried to use my ult there, but obviously it was on cooldown. That's an enemy team VP. Uh, get out of bird form, Medivh. Hey, Medivh, just get out of bird form. What are you afraid of? What I like is that our bonus damage actually adds up on buildings as well, so it makes our siege damage even even better if we're able to sit here and just auto attack. Now I'll be the first to admit I'm not super comfortable with Wave of Force. Uh, when I was trying this build out previously, I was using Disintegrate, but I just didn't I just didn't feel like it had the same kind of rhythm that uh, we're looking for. So, at, like I said, level 13, when Li Ming uses our abilities, her next basic attacks increase by 75% and deal spell damage instead of physical damage. So this is actually a really reliable way to get extra auto attack damage on characters like Arthas that have built-in spell damage or physical damage protection. Uh, and then this stacks up to three times. So we can do our combo and then auto attack for even more damage. Okay, I'm a little worried here. But look at that fucking damage. We immediately made Le or, uh, Tracer leave just because of our auto attack combo. Nothing more. We're auto attacking for almost 300 fucking damage on Li Ming. With all of our reset damage on top of that, of course. Uh-oh. Uh, drop it, drop it, drop it. Fuck. I'm fucking out of mana. Doesn't matter, because we have auto attack damage built up from Cannoneer. Good job, team. Yeah! All right. So as you can see with Cannoneer as well, it makes it so if you even if you miss Seeker, you're still going to get that bonus extra auto attack damage, which feels great. But if you do manage to just land, again, I keep calling it Seeker. I know that might be confusing. You're magic missiles if you hit anything with magic missiles it automatically just makes your cannoneer even better the two talents complement each other so much and again i want to stress that this build's just for fun i, I really don't think it's that viable all right so the enemy team was wiped we are pretty far ahead on this objective right now but of course that could change at any moment uh, what I also really like about this build is the Calamity damage. As I've mentioned, we can teleport in and deal damage on targets. So, if they are really aggressive like this team's about to be... Uh, never mind, I'll just get on. Didn't do it fast enough. We actually have a counter to characters like Tracer, characters like Zeratul, that are going to be on top of us all the time. Uh, we do have a really good lead here, and it looks like we are picking up several kills on top of me. Like, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this trade. Looks like we're going to get the objective. All we had to do is give up my life for it. My life for Iron. Once we hit level 13, we are going to go for Fireflies. Again, I know that's weird, but drastically increases the magic missile speed. We can land those cues even easier, theoretically. And reduces the cooldown by one second, which means that we can do a QWQ combo in a two second time period and get the maximum amount of damage out of Cannoneer when we follow up with that auto attack. Just makes everything kind of flow together a little bit better. My voice sounds better today. Like I had the weekend, I recovered, but my throat is really dry for some reason. We're gonna, br we're gonna bust out the cough drops. All right, we are pushing into the bottom keep versus this enemy team. Yo, I did everything I could there to stay alive. I did my full combo. I feel like I hurt Zeratul a lot, but unfortunately didn't pick up a kill. I don't think I auto attacked him actually, so my combo could have been a little bit better. Oh, we actually dodged the Octo Grab with that blink. Totally on purpose, obviously. Uh, let's go ahead and get a kill there on Murky. Unfortunately, he did get that Medivh shield. Look at that! Woo! Woo! We're doing it, team! 
Dude, they have so much invulnerability too. Imagine this if they didn't have Medivh and Murky Bubbles. Oh shit! Yeah, this is just plain fun. This is just this is just plain fun. It's just fun. It's not good, but man, is it fun to look at. All right, so it looks like we are siege of the enemy team right now, moving in. Uh, we should be able to get this keep no problem. At least I hope. Uh, they're starting to call retreat. I don't. I really don't want to. But if that's what the team wants to do, then you know, okay. So many of my auto attacks are being mitigated by their uh, Medivh. And their Zeratul was creeping around there for a moment, but I don't see him now. Yeah, this is my... I've, I've done a few different variations in testing this build just for fun. And uh, this is my favorite setup. I thought at first it didn't make sense to dodge Seeker because Seeker is a lot of bonus damage. But because you're going to be going in for auto attacks anyway, Calamity actually works out fuck, really well. All right, we did walk into that, unfortunately. I think we're okay. I don't think we're going to be jumped on. It does... Sorry, I just hit the mic real hard. It does feel weird to give up dominance. It does feel really strange to not have that health return, but that's why this build is, like, super all-in. It's because you have to pick up kills or you just won't live. Um, we are ready for the objective, though. Murky up top, Zeratul in the bottom lane, so we are going to have a little bit of advantage. They are... Um, yeah, they are pushing in top pretty hard, though. All right, Tracer was middle. Let's get our auto attack prime. Beautiful. Oh, shit. We're going to blink out of this right away. That seemed a little unnecessary, but let's line up everything on Medivh. Beautiful. Go, damage, fly. Fly. <laughs> Oh, and it's worth mentioning that we avoid uh, Uther's armor buffs. Because isn't it physical armor or is it just flat armor? I actually don't know. Oh, that's fun. Dude, the stars aligned for this comp today. For real. This could have been a lot harder to make. This video could have been real stressful. Oh, I auto-attacked a minion there. What I like about it is just how... Again, I know it's not a viable build. I know how Li Ming is supposed to be played. I know her most effective builds, fully aware of it. But I just like how easily all of this flows together. Like, the developers clearly intended for people to be like, I could auto-attack with Li Ming. That sounds fun. Uh, but it just never caught on. It's real good, though. It's, it's real enjoyable. It's also really fun versus a Murky, because he just keeps giving me resets. He just keeps giving me resets, you know? Oh! Wait, wait, wait. There we go. Look at that shit. Did you see that shit? Ah, too early. So, I am pretty low on mana right now, but it's coming up pretty quick. Astral Presence is kicking in. Definitely want that region globe. We got it. No, stay, 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 stay. Zeratul's going back to go to the bottom lane. We don't want that. We want everybody here. Oh, I could have done so much damage to their Zeratul. I would just hesitate a second. All right, let's just stay back. Let's make sure we don't get Octograb real bad or something. Um, I actually like picking up uh, Archon here. I know that sounds weird. But I like the option just just be able to do this. Because we didn't pick up Disintegrate earlier, it's nice to just be able to turn this on and off. It kind of increases your siege damage at the end of the game. Now, Tabula Rasa, by the way, has great synergy with our build so far. And on paper, Tabula Rasa is the way to go. Uh, because Tabula Rasa gives you more damage as you continue to weave abilities, which has great synergy with Cannoneer. Again, like I said, I just like the option of being able to hang back and be a long-range damage dealer all of a sudden. Because up until this point in the game, we've been really up close and personal. It's nice to be able to just do this. Now, unfortunately, we don't get the slow. Which is a little unfortunate. And there is a slight cooldown with, like, weaving in and out of that form. Uh, let's just go ahead and blink forward. These minions are right in my fucking way. It's a pain in the ass. 
Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. I'm sorry, team. I'm sorry I'm feeding. I need resets now! Stop pushing them away from me. You're making my job really hard. <laughs> it's hard enough to land these skill shots as it is. Much less when most enemies are flying across the screen when they don't need to be. Look at that shit, though. Just look at that shit, though. All right, now we just turn this on and we hold the button down. I'm starting to sense that they don't want me doing this. Keep me alive, team! Keep me alive, team! The beam is active! <laughs> that was fun. That was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that. I hope you guys enjoyed that, too. Like I said, this week... I don't want any fucking, I don't want any more stress in my life. I'm just looking to have some fun games. That's all. So, uh, I would say that that was a success. Uh, I didn't see our damage at the end, but it felt like I was doing a lot. It felt like I was doing a lot of damage. Uh, so our stats, 72,000 hero damage, 79,000 siege damage. We were literally 107 siege damage off of being number one on everything for our team. Our talents that we went for today, again, this is tried, tested, and refined. I didn't just come with this off the top of my head. I've been working on this. I've been working on this bullshit build. We have Astral Presence, Charge Blast, Calamity, Wave of Force, Cannoneer, Fireflies, and then Archon. Pure power! Again, uh, I want to stress that... Um, did I say Tabula Rasa earlier? Tal Rasha's, excuse me, has a lot of synergy with this. So if you weave all of your abilities, if you QWE, then auto attack, you're dealing a lot of damage. A lot of damage. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you did, please be sure to hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe if you're new. And... Uh, I'll come up with something else to do in the next video. Just off the top of my head, something fun.